computer. Okay, we're recording. Would anyone like to share Hi. something um, good and happy they want to share with us to get us started? My daughter got married. Yay! That was very happy. Very wonderful. So beautiful. Rita, Rita was there to take part. So she very beautiful event. Uh, the mother of the bride, as well as the bride, was a sight to behold. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Oh yeah, it was very joyous. It was a lovely weekend. Um, and I'll share one other thing that happened like the same week, which is that Sharp again got a hundred thousand dollar donation. Wow. wow. So we go from like maximum maybe like five thousand ever to like a hundred. Wow. wow. How did that happen? Lisa? But it was really it was really uh it was a wonderful feeling, I'll tell you. Yeah. How did how did that happen? Donation or a private donation? The private donation yeah. and it was from somebody who called in who needed help who's actually in the UK who I've been coaching a little bit and uh he's he just has a lot of money and was very generous oh god that's such a great story that's yeah. amazing Good i mean it's just you. it was just like one of those things that just happened like he he offered he offered something like right away like i it was but you know people do that sometimes i mean i they have done that um and you know that can mean anything you know that can mean i want to give you five hundred dollars that can mean anything <laughs> um so i don't know it was i i mean he asked me you know what i wanted and i said i couldn't I couldn't really say more than that because I just couldn't probably get the words out, you know, to ask for more than that. But I said, you know, that would really make a big difference. And he said, I'm going to, I'm going to wire it to you. Wow. So, so you, you put the number out there. You said a hundred thousand would be nice. I did. <laughs> ask and you shall receive. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Well, they do say that when you get what you ask for, you didn't ask for enough. I know, right? <laughs> perhaps, well. perhaps. <laughs> this is a start. You know, if he's in the deal, then you... It's not for now, and we know where he lives. Yeah. <laughs> well, look, I mean, there may, there may in fact be more behind it. There may not, but it, it, it's a turning point, really, for us. I mean, there's... Major. Yes really never got anything like that so so anyway that's my good news yeah. wow. Wow. well done lisa well done oh my gosh that's so exciting congratulations for Thank being you. able to ask for it yeah. having a number in mind and asking for it fabulous I never i didn't really even have a number in mind like i would my 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 number really is 250,000 which is what i really like i would want to bring in you know, soon, like in the next six months, if we could. But the thing is, what I do know is that it builds upon itself. So once you get a large six figure donation, oftentimes it opens the door for people to give other large donations. So that's what I'm hoping for. Wow. That we'll continue the energetic, you know, momentum of that. And then how, how do you celebrate that within the organization? I mean, do you let it be known in a newsletter? Or? Well, what I did was I tech, I mean, I, I sent out an email to everyone and let them know uh, that it, and it was to remain anonymous. And I told them a little bit of the backstory. And so tomorrow is our first uh, board meeting since the donation. Uh, so I don't know. I mean, I haven't really planned to like, you know, celebrate, but maybe I should. Um, but I, I don't, I mean, it would be a nice thing to do, but I, I hadn't made any plans to. So our meeting starts at quarter of eight in the morning. I'd really have to get, you know, my act <laughs> together pretty early, <laughs> but it's not impossible. Um, Especially yes, especially since you asked for hundred thousand dollars and it arrived. <laughs> Nothing is impossible. Right, exactly. Exactly. 
Uh, wow. Thrilling. Thrilling. Beautiful. Yeah. Celebration. Our miracles are possible, you know. They certainly are. And yeah. I think we're living that. But to celebrate, yeah, it's a good idea. It could be something so, so small, but just a gesture. We could put on happy and dance. I mean, we could do any number of things. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. 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 How many people are at the board will be attending the board meeting? Oh, we'll probably have, I don't know, about eight or nine people on the call or in person. Fabulous. Yeah. Do they dance? I, I didn't hear that. What? Do they what? Do they dance? I don't know. I don't know yet, but we'll find out, won't we, if we, if we put it on. Maybe a reason to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. You give anyone a reason. I'll tell you something. At Kate's wedding, you know, we danced all night. They had the best band. I'm just shutting uh, the door to the bedroom because it's loud. Um, so, uh, it, yeah, I saw people shake tail feathers I hadn't seen before, so you never know, you know. <laughs> anyway, so yeah. Anyway, we'll find out. More good news? Somebody else has help. to share? Anyone? Um. Irma. Um, okay, my news is uh, not necessarily good. Um, Andrew was diagnosed with bipolar, bipolar two. And I guess the good news that came from that is that he is now mm. on medication to try to monitor that. Um, and then the piece that's, that actually is a piece of good news is that he just landed the biggest contract of his life going to Abu Dhabi for, um, it'll be a one month gig that will extend, I think, to a couple months. So he'll be there for November and then come back and then maybe go back again. So he'll be working for the government and doing um, a project, which I'll know more details when I see him this week coming up. Mm. Um, but, you know, as a mother watching a son go, a child go through that bipolar and, and thinking um, the state of depression. So he has bipolar two, which is that it, it's more of the depressive side than the uh, manic. <clears throat> And I've been um, reaching out to him regularly and how are you doing? What's good? And yeah, he just tells me how bad and bleak and dark things are. And it's, mm. it's just hard not to take that in or try to change it or do anything because there's nothing to do but just to listen. How long has he been on the med for A couple of months. So we started with 250. It's a uh, Depakote and they went up to 500, 750. Now he's up to a thousand milligrams. Um, so I did take the opportunity to get to know a little bit more about the disease and joined a support group uh, with other mothers who have children, adult children, or actually themselves that are dealing with this. And one of the things that I found interesting is that um, Andrew is highly functional. Uh, that's not a surprise. I knew that. But others have adult children that are not. So uh, that was a blessing to hear that he is you know, financially stable and going out. And, and even though sometimes he will just watch video games and smoke pot the whole time. So for weeks, for weeks. Um, but he's uh, found the, the psychiatrist and uh, found the psychologist. And I, of course, I wanted him to go in a different direction, but I couldn't. He said, don't even go there, mom. Don't start with the natural stuff. I don't want to hear about Amen Clinic. I don't want to hear about any of that stuff. Um, I don't want to hear about nutrition. So I celebrated the fact that he's doing it his way and he's taking action um, because it was uh, just so bleak, so bleak. Very sorry, very sorry for you, really. Thank you. Um, I, I empathize with the role of being a parent of a young person, a, a son in this case, who is very debilitated and has been so for many years. And you do a little dance between the mother caretaker and the professional and the recognition that this is an adult who may or may not want or need your intervention and the emotional uh, response of empathy that you have and helplessness to watch it unfold. Right. So um, those are all things I'm very familiar with. 
I'm sad. I'm sorry to hear that you're going through that. Was that a surprise to you, that di diagnosis? Or was it something you sort of knew for a long time? I don't know how to answer that question, Rita, because I, I felt for the longest time that he had some sort of issue. Yeah. And I wanted him tested very early on in his school year. And he did not want to do it, nor did his father want to do it. I don't know that they would have diagnosed him as bipolar then. Yeah. He was having a focusing issue in ADD, ADHD, and that could have sent him down the wrong road. Um, and so I just thought it's just so difficult to be around somebody who's depressed all the time. Mm. So I didn't, because it was that slow drip of constant and the bigness of it that I, I didn't think so much about the diagnosis. I thought, well, this is Andrew. <clears throat> got a very depressed side he's got a very creative side and so um yeah that's all i can say about that i surprised when i heard it when i heard him tell me and he said like oh you know like i have the flu i have, I have yeah. my flu. um so i thought well, i need to respond in the same way that he's responding to me because uh then it becomes something bigger and perhaps it should be versus, okay, what are the steps? And what I realized through this program that I was taking is um, you know, crisis management. What, what, what are the triggers for him that sent him down the spiral of, um, of sadness and depression? And we're not really at that place to talk about that yet. No, and we may never be. Um, but at one point, he was certainly spiraling down and in a crisis because of the program that I was taking. And I said, you are in a crisis and you need to do something. You need to call your doctor to let him know. And he took that seriously and he did. And because I, I think most of us, when we're in crisis, it's like, it'll pass, it'll get better. And hopefully it does or, or it doesn't or whatever, but he took action. So I was very proud of him to do that, for doing that. Absolutely. But I, I want to celebrate his um, accomplishment with this contract and um, working with the government and hope that he's safe. And I didn't even know where Abu Dhabi was. <laughs> so I'm learning the geography about how close it is to Saudi Arabia. And um, I just, I, I'll tell you one, one story, one last story. Oh, yeah. um, Andrew, when he was going through customs, they flew him over there to Abu Dhabi uh, a month or so ago. And when he was going through security, they pulled him over and said, sir, you have marijuana dusting in your backpack. And he said, as he was telling me the story, as only Andrew can do, like lightheartedly. So I was looking at 20 years in prison, mom. I was like, not funny, not funny. So I, I did what I always do because I'm so used to running from the police or dealing with the police. Or um, I said, no, sir. No, sir. No, sir. So he just flat out denied it and they let him go. So, you know, that's going to be probably his legacy, how he gets away. Um, and it just slips under the radar of, of situations. But he knows now to have a separate backpack when he goes to Abu Dhabi. He cannot sleep without marijuana. So that, and he's going there for a month. So I don't know how he's going to manage that. I, I, I don't know. Um, but he did tell his doctor he's going and he is, does have enough medication. And so, um, hopefully he'll sleep. I don't know how, but it's his work, it's his life. And that's what he wants to do. So I didn't want to wow. leave anybody on a somber note, but that's what's happening. No, I've got a, I've got a bunch. Like I, I could toss a few things out. Um, and, and Irma, I am, my, my heart's always with Andrew. I love following him on Instagram and just seeing his work. My mouth's always ajar. He's an amazing young man that I'm really happy I got to know a little bit a couple of years ago. Maybe you'll be telling us that you're going to visit him in Ayu Dhabi. <laughs> and you'll have stories too. Don't bring the marijuana with you. <laughs> The same. Um, got a couple of fun things. It's been a it's been a really good couple of weeks, even with everything going on with my cousin. My my, my new thing now is to not let it sit inside of me when there's um, heartache or grief or frustration or you know whatever the feeling is that I'm not delighted with. 
I envision myself sitting on a bus with these other seats and I acknowledge all the feelings, I make room for them, they're there, but they don't take over. And it's really been kind of cool. I've been doing this since a little bit before I went to Greece, but it's really taken hold since I went to Greece. So um, you all know the stuff with my cousin, so that's sort of the not so good, but she's, her, her mood and her, she's doing all right. But I've got fun stuff. Um, I think most of you know I'm part of the um, senior dance team. And we we have a live audition with America's Got Talent uh, in two weeks. I know, like, what? I don't know about this dance team. What is it? Tell us more about it. Oh, um, <laughs> the, 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 uh, the Reader's Digest version is someone I knew 20 years ago who was a journalist for the New York Times back when I had my PR firm. Now we're both you know, doing very different things. We had met for coffee back in January and she's always doing fun stuff. Like she follows Bruce Springsteen everywhere. She's with him twice this past week. She's like a super groupie fan. She just has a lot of fun stuff. <laughs> and I said to her like, what, is, what layers did you have to release in your life to get to this point? I've since gotten to know her since we started dancing. So she does have layers, but she just looked at me that day, last January and she goes, it's fun, so I do it. And I was like, whoa. And three months later, you know, we say goodbye. Nice to see you again. Great to catch up. Three months later, I get an email that she's starting a senior dance team. Mm -hmm. um, the only requisite is that you love to dance and you have some rhythm. And here's the information. <laughs> Come into Manhattan on this day, at this dance studio. And I didn't tell anybody I was going, but it was like I've been waiting for that email my entire life. So I went. I'm part of the team. We uh, performed for the Brooklyn Cyclones, which is a minor league baseball uh, team affiliated with the Mets during the summer. We've gotten press in the New York Daily News. We've gotten CBS Radio last week. We've gotten, and Susan makes things happen. So we're practicing for um, this audition that she made happen for us for America's Got Talent. It's their only <laughs> East Coast edition. It's probably 7 billion people, but we've got an 8.30 a.m. call time, so it's real. But when we went to rehearsal yesterday, right, she always starts with like notes and she goes, okay, I've got a couple of things to let everybody know. Good morning, America's interested. We just don't have a date yet. So we all were like, oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And she, and she pitched us. Uh, to a producer she knows for, as a reality show. And someone goes, well, what's, what reality show? She goes, no, 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 we would be the reality show. So I don't know, you know, I, I always say none of it's come, going to come to fruition, but we're gonna, get a, we're gonna get a contract with the Brooklyn Cyclones next summer. And I'm auditioning for a live national television show in two weeks, so who knows? So um, that's my fun. That's a lot, I'm, I'm working really hard on fun and play. And I thought about this. Um, some of you know, remember Christy Myers. She's someone that with us. I'm sorry for anybody who doesn't know. Uh, she was my coach 12 years ago. Yeah. And for that six month period, I worked on fun and play. And I felt like I didn't get very far. So some things just take longer than others. Mm -hmm. uh, so today I, <laughs> I led a workshop um, on essential oils. First one ever I've done on essential oils. Basically, because we got to sit on the floor and, and make something. So I'm trying to like make things now, my new creative side coming out through the dance, I think. And um, 10 people showed up. And you can't even get 10 people in a yoga class these days because there's so much competition. So as I was washing dishes before this call, I thought, I only made 10 handouts. What would have happened if I had made 15 or 20 handouts? <laughs> so I just love the questions that are coming up in my mind because I don't think I would have even thought to ask myself that question yeah. Um, yeah. at another point. And then um, a woman that I met with on Friday sent me this long, beautiful email today that she does want to work with me, but she can't start till December 10th. Would that be okay? And uh, she's sort of like another ideal client. This would be the second one that I got this year. <sighs> That's amazing. And then one more thing, and then I'll be, I'll be complete. Um, I, three people thought of me for this man who's in his 80s who wants private yoga. And uh, he has some stenosis in his back. And he's been trying to go to the gym and take classes, but it's very hard for him to keep up or to move or even know what he's doing because he's very new at it. 
So um, he called me this morning in the midst of you know everything else I was doing. I called him back this afternoon. So I'm going to meet with him on Friday at his home. We're doing at least one session. I told him a certain price for one session. And I said, but if you, you know, commit to a session, 10 sessions with me, it'll drop down a little bit. So um, he's an Indian man, very, very sweet, good sense of humor. He got my sense of humor and um, which I always throw out there. I'd never know if someone's going to catch it and throw it back, but he did. So I would say that it's been a really great 48 hours, exceptionally good 48 hours. Wonderful. Yeah. I'm, riding, I'm riding that wave for sure, because we so, know not every day is like that, but it has been, so I'm um, yay. And how was, how was the oil class? Oh, it was fun. I mean, you know, I, I'm, I'm a novice myself. I basically just shared um, how, how I like to use them. And a lot of people actually already are like, I only started using my diffuser about a month ago, so I finally have one that I like here. And people knew about diffusers and they knew oils. Um, they had fun with some of the blends. They made really interesting concoctions for themselves. I gave them little bottles with distilled water. Um, but a few of them already, two of them already work with another company. One of them already works with Young Living. And I didn't really try to sell it in, um, frankly. I was delighted that from people that showed up at the workshop, I earned over a hundred dollars just doing the workshop. To me, that was incredible. Because like I said, 10 people don't show up any place these days because there's so much competition. And just in Rhinebeck alone, you can walk half a block in five different directions and go to that many places to do yoga. So, so that's my new and good. Great. Who did you have? Pardon me? Who, who just where, spoke? Where, where did you have it? Um, at the yoga Catherine. studio in, in town. Hi. The yoga studio in town. Oh, you did have it at the yoga studio. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. That's why it was even more amazing. I had it at a yoga studio and people kind of came in for it. <laughs> the owner was surprised. She goes, oh my God, 10 people. I'm like, I know. Like, wow. So next time I'll make more handouts, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's great, Mella. Yeah. Next time I'll be there. <laughs> yeah, I never even thought about any of that. I was just thinking of fun things I wanted to do when I got back from Greece, and that came up for me. You know, I'm on the airplane. Oh, fun. And things, and I'm like, yeah, I think it's time to try one of those. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Good for you. Good luck with the 80 year old gentleman. That sounds like a lovely yeah. thing. All right, coming from India and. Like having had the experience and and he gets your sense of humor. Wow. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so welcome, Kelly. Hello. Hey. Kelly. Your picture's Hello. frozen, but we can hear you. I, yeah, I just lost my video. Okay. So you look sleepy there, but you know. <laughs> so people are just sharing some um, whatever they want, really. Mostly good stuff. I think we lost. Did we lose her? Oh, no, there she is. I don't know. She'll come back. So who's up next? Uh, anyone else? Just a quick update from me uh, on the new and good. I um, just got back from a week and, uh, well, five days in Mexico and had a nice relaxing time. Just great to get away, enjoy some warm weather and have some fun with some friends. Great. Where did you go in Mexico? Uh, it was all inclusive Playa Mujeres. Uh -huh. and yeah, just, you know, I'll, I'm all in for the fun. I think having more fun in your life is a good goal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> How's your work? You know, um, this month is my five-year anniversary for doing acupuncture. Wow, wow, wow. That went fast. Congratulations. Yeah, so it's going good. Yeah, I'm loving it. Okay. Lovely to see you all. I missed everyone that, since I wasn't at the weekend, but this, this is a nice idea. And I was raking leaves all day today, so I took a bath and put my PJs on. All right. Yeah, and I just saw an article, I can't remember where it was, and if I can find it, I'll send it to you. It was talking about, uh, you know, fighting the opioid epidemic 
and they're doing research to see if acupuncture can replace a lot of those opioids. So the future could be very bright. I think so. And more and more insurance is being uh, covering acupuncture so people can use that as an option. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Who's next? I don't think there's somebody here I don't know. Catherine, you sort of fade in and out. I know it's difficult sometimes from your location. Yeah, because my it keeps saying my internet is weak, <laughs> which is no surprise. Right now we can hear you. Can can you can you hear me? Yes. Okay. What's happening, Catherine? Um, <laughs> hmm. Well, um, as you know, I had a mini cri or I had a crisis in, in during the summer about um, finally thinking I could retire, <laughs> and um, I'm going to hit the six five in January. Thought so. I was making plans as to. Um, but Al wasn't quite seeing it that way, and um, he dug his heels in and I dug mine in, and um, bottom line is um, he finally, he, he, he took an about face as he said he had to be hit over the head with a two by four, um, and he has since realized that yes, I'm entitled to retire and I'm entitled to do a few things that I'd like to do before we, you know, decide what and where we want to be. And um, so I was really, really excited about that because uh, we bought a different RV. Um, we bought a Jeep to tra tag along with it, uh, to go with it, and we were going to go all over. And um, I was preparing <laughs> my, that to be my destiny until I had to um, fill out all that lovely paperwork for um, Medicare. Well, that in and of itself is a joke, as you all know. Um, but on a good day, unfortunately, I am taking a specialty med that is not on any prescription plan. Um, net net, it probably costs about five thousand dollars a month, and the best I could do is probably about three thousand a month. And so my, all my illusions of um, <laughs> retiring went right out the window in less than a week, and. Um, but I'm not, I, I was down for the count for a while, you know, I, I put on my pouty face and I did the crying thing and uh, stamped my feet and did all that. And then I, you know, I got up, brushed off, and now I've got to figure out how to make it work. Um, and I will. I'm just not quite sure how yet. So, um, but the bottom line is that um, the one thing I realized through um, all of this was that no matter what, and no matter how much time has gone by, or my not being there last uh, May, made no difference. When I reached out, there wasn't a hand that wasn't there. And um, having come from a background where I have felt abandoned so often, um, I kind of wasn't expecting anything, but I just needed to put it out there. And so when it all came back, there, the rest of this stuff is just BS. That's what really mattered. So I just want to say thank you and how glad I am to be on this call tonight. I mean, for me, it doesn't get much better than that. So, Norma, I can empathize with you. Um, as far as grown sons, <laughs> um, you know, that's been a cross I feel I've had to bear for a long time, but um, it is what it is, and I can love them more afar. And if that's the way it's going to be, that's the way it's going to be, you know. Um, that, that's not supposed to be maudlin. I didn't mean it that way. I meant that um, I think what, what, 
through all this, um, I think what happens is, um, you know, every, you know, in Tai Chi, as you know, everything is balanced up, down, back, forth. And, and so I try to find the balance in all of it. You know, with the negative, there's positive for sure. Um, <clears throat> whether it be a support group, whether it be my support, you guys, um, there's always that positive to it that I am so ever grateful for because the negative is going to be there as well. Um, and I just find the balance to make it work. Um, some days better than others. Catherine, can I ask you a question about the medication? That's right. Sure. Um, so some, some of these medications have different ways to get it, to get medication reimbursed, whether or not through the company or through other avenues. Yeah, I'm assuming that you looked at that. Yes, it, it, there are. Mm -hmm. um, the problem is that, and, and I, oh, how do I say this? Um, they had put me on this medication about two years ago, and it was, it was only costing me $5 a month. So there was a program that, that was available. And now that I'm going to go on Medicaid, they want to know my whole life savings. Not one question on there is, what have you done for yourself to own your own health care to minimize any of the, the uh, repercussions? Not one question and not one person's asked. And, but everybody wants your financials and they want Al's financials. Well, I have a problem with that because if I'm spending $3,000, I can guarantee you it's not going all into research. It's going to the pharmaceutical companies companies and the muckety mucks that, that run it and i just have a real hard time doing that and it's not within my i can't foresee myself doing that so if there's not another option to take i'm not sure what's going to happen but yes i have thought there are and and for sure i probably could do that but again we're not in the the income bracket that it would make it worthwhile to do that unfortunately now this drug has been working for but you. i'm not going to sell my yes it has okay. this is the first time in the last two years is the first time that i have been able to function and move and um there's always going to be pain that that goes along but but i can manage that but i can move and i can sit and i can walk and i can kneel and i could do all those things that i couldn't do before and um and to me it was was a bait and switch, which I don't appreciate. And I, I didn't think it was quite legal, to be honest with you. I didn't think they could put you on something like that and then, you know, take it away because you can't afford it. I could if I sold the house for sure and gave up my life savings. Mm -hmm. But um, I've worked too hard for that. And I'm, I'm not willing to do that. You know, but that's a choice I'm making. Mm -hmm. We'll see. Yeah. Wish you the best with that, Catherine. Thank you. It'll work out. Is there somebody here I don't know? There's, there's, I don't know how to. Is there a where? Do you see everybody? There are names or something? Oh. I'm under Marilena for. Yeah, Debbie. That's you. Yeah. Debbie, you were. So, hi, honey. Hello. <laughs> I didn't see. Your hair is back. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and Marilena is not on the call, right? No, yeah. just uh, just her name is. Oh. Okay. So Deb, things are going well in Florida. Oh, uh, they are. Um, I had a little setback for myself, um, but you know, as they say, things happen for a reason. So um, uh, September was the five year anniversary of my dad's passing and all these things that have taken place since then, actually before that, when Hurricane Sandy hit New Jersey, we ended up losing uh, a property and having to rebuild selling that and then selling everything in New Jersey, moving down here um, and just doing, doing, doing. 
trying to keep up with everything. And I was experiencing horrible insomnia. I was sleeping every other night. And the night that I was sleeping, I was getting two hours of sleep. And, but I was fully functioning the next day. Wow. I could just carry on as if I had eight hours sleep. What? Yeah. It was, it was like <laughs> I was on drugs or something. And I knew, I knew this wasn't right. Wow. It just, because eventually I would crash and then I would sleep and then the cycle would start over again. So, wow. so I did some research, found a great acupuncturist. Um, I'm getting uh, treatment. I'm actually smelling this wonderful cream that he gave me um, for my uh, adrenals. I have adrenal burnout. Mm -hmm. So my cortisol, instead of going down during the day, is going up at 10, 12 o'clock. And I'm wide awake at 12 o'clock. So, I mean, it's great. You know, I can get things done and, you know, clean the whole house. But it's... uh, not not good so so this guy this guy's great he's um joan you would know a doc d-o-m is that a doctor of oriental medicine oriental medicine oriental medicine okay so he's been practicing for about 30 years he's wonderful um he also does acu uh, acupressure for allergies he's been doing allergy testing through kinesiology testing and he found all kinds of things I was allergic to Florida trees and grass. Oh, <laughs> Florida trees? Yeah. And um, we have a lot of them here. I live in a Florida. community <laughs> called Shady Oaks. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, we, he found I was allergic to iodine, which might have been the whole reason for my thyroid problem. Um, what else? Grains. And um, he actually clears it with acupressure, and then he does some acupuncture um, points, and uh, seems to be clearing everything. So the last one he's going to do is dust and mold. So I always knew I never wanted to clean, and that's the reason why. So so everything happens for a reason. So. Mike is actually having some difficulty with his ankles, um, arthritis, I guess, after being on his feet for 35 years. And um, they do a a technique, Joan, you might've heard heard of it. It's um, FMT are the initials. And they actually help to regrow some of the um, cartilage that's back that you're losing, I guess. So he's next on the list once I get through my visits um he's going to go and of course all of this is out of pocket Mm -hmm. but i have such a high deductible anytime i go to the doctor it's out of pocket so so i might as well put the money out now and hopefully you know things will get better as we get older so have you started sleeping any better i have yeah i'm um last night was only four hours but um I had gone four days after he did a treatment. I had gone four days sleeping eight hours a night. And so he said I also have problems. Sorry? How did you find this doctor? I just did an internet search um, for, you know, in this area. um, And he had a couple videos up there about he specializes in thyroid and diabetes, which I do. And I'm like, okay, this is a great find. And he does a free consultation like we do sometimes. Um, so I went to see him. <laughs> and then he, um, you know, he sits with you for like an hour and a half, your first visit. And then he sets up a plan for you. So, um, so I said, I got to do something. And it, it worked out to be great. So wished we lived closer, Joan. I, I know, know you know me <laughs> So, um, but yeah, I, like you said, everything happens for a reason. And um, I wasn't taking care of myself. I was taking care of everybody else. Oh, so that, that. it was a good lesson. Wait, well, come <laughs> back, you, you said you were allergic to iodine? Yeah, he, he has a list of like 200 things and you hold a vial in your hand and they do kinesiology testing. Right. And when I held the iodine, it went, 
right down to the floor. So, so that c it could be, I'm not sure, I'm still getting tested for the antibodies for the Hashimoto's, um, but it could just be the iodine. So, but I think what, what wound it all up this summer, I don't know if any of you knew, I didn't tell too many people, um, other than the fundraiser I just had up on Facebook is, um, Mike's family lost, uh, he lost his nephew over the summer um, to suicide. So that was kind of like the last straw of me, you know, not feeling good and needing to do something after that. So, oh. but his, his, his entire family, Arm, um, I'd like to, Arm, um, I'd like to speak to you about it, has bipolar. Oh. And he was highly functioning. And no one really, no one really knew. He just broke down, and a week later is when they found him, and it was, it was horrible. So, so that was just the last straw on everything that's happened over the past five, seven years. So, wow. But I'm on a good path now. So I'm taking care of me, like we tell everybody else. So are you happy with your home? We are. Yeah, we finally feel like, you know, we, this is our house now. We're not living in someone else's house. So we put our final touches on it. It was two years um, yesterday wow. that we moved in. Wow. So, um, so yeah, yeah, we're, we're settled. We have a great little neighborhood. Um, a lot of nice neighbors. I'm not far from my mom. She's still independent at 90 years old. Mm -hmm. So, what do you do about the tree allergy? The, is the acupuncture going to fix it, or you just have to go all the time? No, that's that's what I didn't want to do. My neighbor was going for shots every week, and I didn't want to do that. And so he does um, acupressure. It's the initials are N A E T, mm -hmm. natural allergy allergy elimination technique. And there was actually a chiropractor in New Jersey I had worked with when we, when we first got out of school, he would do that. Um, and uh, he actually cleared me of strawberries when I was in New Jersey. And then I just moved on and kind of forgot about that. But yeah, so far I haven't been sneezing, eyes watering, all that that I had done last fall. Because believe it or not, we do have a fall, the leaves actually come down. <laughs> But they come right back. <laughs> they don't stay down for long. So, but yeah, I had to do something about that too. It was, I had a horrible winter last year. Jeez. So, so yeah, I'm on a good path now. You look fabulous. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's a lot. Yes. So sorry about your nephew. <sighs> Oh, thank you. Yeah, I was, his brother and his wife just still can't fathom, you know, what, what could have been so bad. He had made a comment that he was going to go to jail. And this was right around the time that Jeffrey Epstein supposedly, you know, because he didn't want to be in jail. And they're still trying to figure out why, why was this, was he going to go to jail? So, so it's, it's going to be a long road for his brother and his wife and their two, there are two daughters. So, um, how old was he? 37. Oh, he was divorced. Um, he had a lot going. He had a um, really good job. He was flipping houses, doing property management, um, filed his own tax return. Really, really smart kid what like Mike's father we always called him a human calculator he could do numbers in his head um, but we think maybe he just took on too much he was just very highly functioning um, with bipolar he was on medication he was not so that's I'm glad to hear that Andrew is on medication his his older brother has it real bad and every seven years the medication stops working for some reason 
And he, he <clears throat> recognizes that and he gets himself to the doctor, you know, to get the medication changed, so. Wow. So that's my journey. Ladies, my, my journey is taking me elsewhere at the moment, so I have to excuse myself. Um, it was a pleasure connecting with Can we have a little bit of you before you go? A little bit Hi. of Can we have a little bit of you before you go? A little update? A little well, life is good. I thought life was good even before I got on this, this Zoom conversation, but I'm sort of feeling life is better for me now. I feel filled with gratitude for all the things that I don't have. I have plenty of things, but somehow I seem to have adjusted to the chronic ones. Stan and I are about to celebrate our 25th wedding anniversary, which together 30 years, which is a personal best for both of us on this second marriage. And it's fun planning it and um, looking back at, at all that we've accomplished and been through uh, during this time. And um, life is in many ways very good. I'm very grateful to get up every morning and to still be doing my dancing. I wanted to hear more about Mela's, uh, what type of dancing she was doing. It didn't sound like ballroom, but it sounded like an Yeah, nice I, I finally asked what kind of dancing it, it is. Yeah. Just, I didn't know either. And someone said it's a, it's, a, it's a combination of Broadway, jazz, and hip hop. And I thought, okay. all right. That's what it sounded like. It. Yeah. it sounds like a lot of fun, actually. And if uh, you, you need a real octogenarian, then uh, I, I'm interested. The oldest, person is 80. the oldest person is 80, so next time there are auditions, I'll let everybody know. Okay, I'm in. I'm in for that. Fortunately, my body, some of my body parts are still working. I get up and I take inventory and I sort of say, well, what can I do with what's working today? So, and I'm working at having fun. That is a paradox. You know, what are you doing? Well, I'm working at having fun. It should come a little bit more easily, but uh, you have to put it in the schedule like everything else. I know I have plenty of couples in my practice. They have no time for intimacy they can't get to bed. And, uh, you know, you got to put it on the calendar or it doesn't happen. So I'll put P-L-A-Y on the, on the calendar. So, have to, hello. Away from dancing, what else are you doing for fun? I, I do, um, I play the piano very seriously, and I have given a, a twist to my work. I've been playing classical since I was a young child, but I'm now doing jazz, and I'm doing show tunes, and I'm playing a lot of Gershwin, which is crossover music, and that's happier music. Yeah. Uh, when, when you perform the classical stuff, people sit there quietly, and they nod their heads, and they say, thank you very much, but when you play Gershwin, I'm playing... Um, uh, I have the stairway to paradise now, and it just, I, when I get to the piano, when I get up, I have a whole different mood, and so that's playing more play, even in the things that I do, and I try to do all of it less seriously and more playfully. Um, I do yoga, I, I'm still ice skating, and I do ballroom dancing every two weeks, so I have a lot of play built into my mm -hmm. life. I thought my practice was sort of petering out, but it somehow has rejuvenated itself. Um, old people come back, they have new aggravations in their life and new challenges. And, you know, you, leave, you have a foundation when you've been in practice for a very long time. So they come back and uh, they send their relatives and so forth. So I seem to be still working. And so all of that is good. Yeah, where, where do you ice skate? I, so there are there are ten ice skating rinks within a half an hour of my house, but right now I yes. skate mostly uh, indoors at the Playland Ice Casino. If any of you know that, and uh, I go during the day, and sometimes at nine o'clock in the morning I go out to the skating rink, and I'm the only one on wow. on an a uh, uh, regulation size rink and with my own music, and I, it's. It's a very rare phenomenon where you just kind of forget and fly around on the ice. But even that, I do um, with more caution. I don't want to fall and I don't want to break anything. So don't do all the things that I used to do. I, I do them, but I do them all differently and uh, with more prudently. Right now, I do have to get off because I have a call coming in that I need to take. But it was great to connect with all of you. And, Good Warm good wishes for healing in all of the problems that were um, expressed here. And I particularly am 
as I said, very empathic to with the, uh, the sense of helplessness, but also the resignation of parents who have to realize that their children's journey is not their journey and that you, their pain is there, but you can't immerse yourself in it, that life has to go on. So mm -hmm. that's what I'm working on. Goodbye. Kisses uh, to everyone and bye, see you in the spring. Okay. Bye. Now. bye. Okay. So hit end. Yeah, you see reading in the lower left in the lower right corner mm -hmm. it says leave meeting. It says end meeting or I don't see it now. I'm just gonna close down. Maybe that will no it hasn't. Leave Zoom. Yeah, there she goes. <laughs> you never got Kelly back. I did get an email from Kelly or a text. Uh, hi, Vicki. Sorry I couldn't stay on the call. My brother is here from Texas leaving in the morning and I wanted to say goodbye before they go to the hotel. Um, she said it's also been a rough week, but I'm not ready to share about it just yet. So I waved to avoid being in the spot tonight. It was good to see everyone's faces. She misses us. That's it. So. How's Vicki? Vicki, uh, well, I was starting to feel better. Um, I had... Um, uh, a, um, I had walking pneumonia for a little bit about a month ago and was getting better from that and just had a little residual cough. And then today I was uh, at a friend's visiting who just had double knee replacements. And uh, as I'm sitting there and feeling worse and coughing and sneezing, and I remembered that she had, she had a cat um, who wasn't in the apartment right then, but so I'm having a reaction to the really feeling it from the, from the cat. So, um, but getting better. So, um, I'm trying the good is that my family is well and healthy. So I'm very happy about that. And they're in Florida right now visiting with, um, my, with their father and, um, and, um, uh, what else? How about rolling harvest? What's that? Share about rolling harvest. Yeah. Well, I do get a lot of joy from the work I do. So that's been um, keeping me very busy, but it's so rewarding. So it's, it's really been, uh, been a good experience. Um, so I was having a lot of trouble with my wrists and I've been going to physical therapy and they're getting better. But last week um, I had injured this wrist that was getting better and we were cooking um, for a couple hundred people um, and it just so happened, it was all these vegetables that everything had to be chopped. So, um, I tried, a good thing for me is I tried to have other people do most of the chopping, uh, which is something I don't usually do. And, um, and, uh, every, the soup was all of it was eaten. So that's, that makes it good and people enjoyed it. So, um, so that's, that's good. Uh, trying to have a little more fun, uh, but I, I'll have to say that sort of Rita is a great role model, all these incredible things that she does. Uh, <laughs> I don't do all those things, uh, but, um, and I agree with her, you shouldn't have to, I guess you have to put it down, but don't want it to be like, oh, I have to do that. It should be just something that comes from joy and, and fun, so that's about it. Well, you know, it reminded me though, if I could just add, I remember in Tai Chi, one of the things that we do is breathing. Um, and we Americans don't, oh, we, we breathe from the neck up. <laughs> and so a lot of breath work is what we do. And I said, I remember I had to put it on my calendar for nine months to breathe, to breathe every day. Mm -hmm. I'm a soul, I get it. But in order to, to get that air into my body, I had to put down to remember to breathe. Right. So yeah, even putting down to have fun I think is a great idea because then it'll just come naturally. And gosh, couldn't we all use more fun? Yes. True, true. Nothing, never too much fun. That's well. It's eight o'clock. Is Doreen? I wanted to raise the. Um, Doreen's not on. The, is Doreen okay? Doreen. Doreen is okay. Italy. She's not on. The, I think she's back. Oh, she's yeah, in back Italy. Now. She's back from Italy. Okay. 
Okay, Lisa, you wanted to raise something? I just wanted to raise the question of a retreat in the spring and a, and a date for that. Mm -hmm. um, I thought it might be I can't cool it when we had a number of people on the call just to kind of look at a calendar together. I'm right, are we looking at May again? I have down. I have in my calendar possibly the eighth, ninth, and tenth. Second. Okay. Okay. Everybody's talking oh. at once. Okay, one person. Okay, so I'll go. So from our the last time we were together, I put in my calendar the weekend of May first, second, and third to hold it, but that was just that was from. That would be that would be the weekend we would we would usually do it. So I just wanted to, you know, confirm that. Lisa, 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 could you put your volume up a little bit? Yeah, we can't, I can't hear you either, Lisa. I know, and I, and I knew that was the case because I was talking earlier and no one can hear me. But my volume is all the way up. Let me just look here, wait a second. Is there volume within Zoom? It's just your computer. I mean, we could hear you, but it's yeah, really strained to hear you. Now we can't hear you at all. I can't hear you at all. You're, you're, you're not Get out and come back in. That's it. Now we hear you now. Just now you spoke. I don't know what's going on then. You can you can test your speaker on the lower left hand corner next next to the microphone. There's a an arrow going up. If you do that, it says test speaker, and I don't know if you can. That just shows that my speaker is working. Pause. Do you hear a replay? Oh, no, I don't. Okay, we hear a lot of noise from somebody. Somebody's moving a lot of papers. Oh, I'm sorry, it's me. I had a spider in my kitchen. I had to kill it with the newspaper. It's gone now. <laughs> okay, can, can you hear me at all? I can hear you, yes, but we can. All right, so the weekend that Vicki mentioned is the weekend we have been doing it for the past at least few years. So does anyone have a conflict with that weekend as of right now? I mean, I do right now because literally this morning I got my dance rehearsal schedule for the next year, but I'm thinking that's probably going to be the one weekend I'm going to have to skip so I can be with all of you unless we have some kind of a performance that's like, you know, that I have to make a decision. Does anyone else? Well, so the following weekend is Mother's Day weekend. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. but then I also have Goddess Weekend. It says all about food. Oh, no. I have it also down for the 16th. I, I might Vicky? have a... Oh. I'm sorry, Vicki, Mother's Day weekend is the, is the third weekend. No, it's the 10th. Mother's, Mother's Day, Day is May 10th. May 10th. Oh, I, yes, you're, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So Go I ahead. also have in my calendar the weekend of the uh, 15th, 16th, and 17th for the Goddess Weekend. So it looks like we may have saved two of them. I think in January is when we said we would confirm unless Lisa needs to confirm now or sooner, then we should probably put an email out to everybody. Right, and we could give both of those dates and see which is better. Yeah. for people that's, that's my that's my other rehearsal schedule because it's two rehearsals a month now 
because at least I asked for a set rehearsal schedule because we weren't, we didn't have one. <laughs> so see what happens when you ask sometimes you get what you, you get what you ask for. So would you like me when I send out the recording uh, to everyone to write down those two dates and ask people to send back um, which ones work? Yeah. Yeah, I need to know pretty soon because I have to get someone in for my mom. Okay. And I have a tentative conflict with the second. It depends on uh, tentatively my nephew's graduating um, from college, although he may need another semester. So another graduation. Yes. These kids are growing so fast. <laughs> okay, so we'll see. Okay. Okay, no. so I'll do that if that works for everyone. Well, if, yeah, I mean, is the timing to, to finalize it in January, does that work? I'm pretty sure I have to go back on the notes. I, I thought I was supposed to like remind somebody to do something in January so we could confirm the date. Okay. Will that work for you, Debbie? Will that give you enough time? What do you um, we can do it now. Not really. <laughs> so do you want me not to, you do want me to put it in yeah. there? Okay. So we have so to those two, two options and see. Yeah, get people start thinking about it now. Yeah, it's good. But you also should suggest a time we need to know by, because yeah. otherwise it becomes vague and- So to tell change. people to respond within a week. Right, but yeah. a certain date. I'll put a date. Yeah. yeah. Please get back by that date, okay. Good. Sounds good. All right, my lovelies. Lovely to see you all looking so well. Really? Back at ya. Okay. You too, Joan. It's so nice to be here for each other. Yes. Oh, you know, sure challenges and the good, you know, the good things, but also all we all go through these challenging times. So nice to be here for each other. Yes. Lisa, you went to see Joan's uh, exhibit, right? Her photo exhibit? I did. I was just there. How was it for you? It, it was nice. Um, I always like seeing the diversity of the work and the different artists. And uh, Joan's exhibit was wonderful because it was the juxtaposition of, of nature with industry mm -hmm. at, in the uh, Meadowland oh. in New Jersey. Yes. Uh, which I have driven past many times, I must say. Um, so I just appreciate her as an artist and somebody who takes <coughs> time to like uh, stop and look at these things and make beautiful photographs that are artistic and meaningful. And also I, I don't play enough and I don't, see as much art as I used to. And so that for me was a joy to get into the city and make sure I did that. And I slept a friend along who was in from Boston. I said, I have to go down and see this photo exhibit. So we did, I mean, it was very easy to go down on the subway. Um, and I'm glad, I'm really glad we did that. I said we could put it bigger around that. Yeah. Well, okay, everyone. Bye. Right. Good night. You all everyone, stay bye. well. Bye. Let's Thank you for organizing. Bye. You're welcome. You all. Bye, everyone. Bye. Have a good night. Good night.